Hello folks, today I wanted to discuss some of the equipment I use for intensive grazing. And I wanted to start with the fence charger. It's set up right behind me. You can see this little shelter that's made to protect the fence charger. I'm going to move you in a little closer and we'll take a close look at it. Okay, so ours is a Power Wizard PW9000. This partic particular fence charger is 110 volt. It's got a 9 joule outlet of up to 150 miles or 900 acres. This farm is right around 200 acres. So, you know, this fence charger is like way over what we need. It's overkill, I guess, is what I'm working towards. But you're better to have something that will do it and stand the test of time than to buy something that's going to give out on you when you uh, need it the most. Um, on the farm, we do not use any portable solar chargers of anything. This powers everything we've got. Now, we are able to control what pastures are powered with these switches. These are kill switches and the yellow is always visible when they're off. So with this one being closed it shuts off the whole farm. We've got a leader wire here and this leader wire runs up to that top post up there by the ATV and stops and then it runs down to the corner right up by the woods and out back to the pastures to fire the fence. And then uh, the power source comes down from there and plugs in right here to uh, where we have some 110 outlets. Pretty much the only electricity on the farm. And it's set up roughly 15 feet from the meter. So that works out real nice. It's close to the road and we were able to do what we needed to do and get it set up. We have no barn on the farm. The animals are never in one place long enough to use the barn, so it would be useless to have the barn. But we do have this shed. Um, it's a 10 by 20, and it's mainly used for storing stuff like mineral salt, the weed eater, uh, gas for the weed eater, and oil, um, different odds and ends like that. So we can cross off the big barn, not needed. The biggest thing and things you're going to need the most of is going to be your poly stakes and your poly wire. Um, do I have a preference? When it comes to poly stakes, I do kind of have a preference. In my mix here today, I have two different poly stakes. I have this fiberglass poly stake made by Spider, which is a very durable, it's a great poly stake. The downside about it is, if it's not used for a while, it starts to get fiber shavings come off and they get into your hand, so you're almost required to wear gloves. Um, these ones were horrible when I first started using them because they haven't been used for a couple years and uh, I had to wear gloves every day. They're to the point now where I've used them so much now and they rub on these other plastic poly stakes that they're smooth again. But one thing to keep an eye on, on the fiberglass, um, I don't know if there's any way to treat that, but what that's called is fiberglass silvering. I'm sure several of you have experienced getting the fiberglass in your hands before, and it's not a great feeling, so something to keep in mind. Now these are a plastic poly stake. They're made by O'Brien Plastic, and uh, these are really durable and they're flexible. Um, it takes a lot to break one of these. Um, they give you two options for hanging your poly wire. You've got this quick hook on this side, and then you have this little pinch clip on the other side to put the poly wire through. But personally, I like the quick hook and loop. I am able to just hook while I'm on the ATV. Anyway, I've also seen and I have a few of these on the farm, I don't have any with me. People take and they buy a long section of rebar and they'll cut it down to three or four foot sections. 
and then they make a plastic insulator that slides down over the rebar and you tighten them down and they think it's cheaper to go that route which it probably is because these cost uh last time i looked four fifty five dollars a piece so they can add up real quick where you can buy a 20 foot section of rebar for probably 10 bucks just a guess um and then your insulators so but you know if you use the rebar you're going to have to carry a hammer around with you to drive them in um, you drive them in too far you're not going to get them back out this has got the little footstep help shove them right down in and uh, a lot of people don't believe this but over the last two winters with the polar vortex and everything i pushed these right down in the ground several times worked real well so they're a lot durable than you think same with these these push right down in the snow the downside to these is if the ground's too hard, you've got two spikes to push down in. For this one here, you've only got the one spike and then the little one inch kick back here. So these go in fairly easy. And I've got a cow smelling the camera. Back up, girl. Come on. So just a few things to keep in mind there. Okay, so let's talk about the poly wire reel for a minute here. Now this isn't an actual poly wire reel, it's actually an extension cord reel, but you can buy these for about $8 where the actual cord reels, you're going to pay uh, for a one-to-one -one crank, you could probably get it for about $25, and you're going to pay uh, $50 and up for a three-to-one geared crank poly wire reel. So uh, these are cheap and a lot more efficient and easier to get started with the intensive grazing, so a lot of people have resorted to this. Um, what you're going to need to do is if you do resort to this and I've did it in several places on this one is go around and drill you a few holes around the outside of the reel then cut notches back to the hole and that gives you a place like up here at the top where I'm able to lock my wire in place and not have to worry about it coming unreal but this is just a basic extension cord winder nothing fancy about it they do hold a lot of poly wire. Okay, over here we have a little bit step up from that. This is your uh, $25, $30 poly wire reel. And how it works is you've got a lock on this side that locks the reel in place and keeps it from turning. You can pull this pin out, which is spring loaded, and give it a quarter turn. Now the reel is free. Now your handle for the crank, or for the reel, is right here. You stick it in this hole, and now you've got your handle to crank it in. And then when you're done, you put your handle back in the tip of your other handle. So, it's decent. The thing I don't like about it is it's heavy. It's kind of awkward compared to this. Um... I feel like all of the weight is out in front of my hand and is pulling on my wrist a lot. Where this is more balanced on my hand and my forearm and my wrist. It feels a lot more comfortable. There's still all of that cranking we have to do because these are just one to one. They make these reels today that have gears inside of them so that one crank by hand does makes the reel go around three times. So they're a three to one geared poly wire reel. Do a search on them and you're gonna be surprised at how quick you can wind in some serious yardage of uh, poly wire. Um, you're gonna pay close to $50 and up for these, but you know if you're spending a lot of time doing the intensive grazing and the mob grazing, and uh, it's probably gonna pay for itself in the long run. So something to think about. I'm going to try and uh, get me at least one of them and see what it's like. See if I enjoy it or not. I also wanted to point out and remind everybody, this land is leased. And I've been managing it now for, this is my third winter. And uh, even when the times, the rare times that the power goes out, I've never had to resort to using a battery charged uh, fence charger 
Um, I've always just kept an eye on the cattle. You know, once they get used to their perimeter fence being hot, they keep that in their memory and they, they don't test it anymore. So, that's never been a problem. Now, if it would be a problem, I do have a small charger up front that I could use, but I've never had to resort to that. Um, the fence charger that we have supplies the whole perimeter fence. Really, guys. And we have shutoffs for each pasture. So I'm able to control what pastures have use and which ones don't. And that's how I uh, kind of do my poly wire. Um, some of the poly wire reels have a plastic handle on the end so you don't have to actually grab the wire because after you hook it to the fence, the reel becomes hot. And by holding it, you're supposed to not get shot. But since I just use these cord winders, I shut the pasture off each time. I just tie it to the fence wire, stretch it across from my poly stakes, and I even actually have been cutting my poly wire and tying it back together. Hasn't been a problem. I want to show you. This here is what's called poly tape. You see how it's flat like a tape and not like a rope or a twine material? In here, and I hope this is picking it up, on each side, on each side coming down through here is six stainless steel wires. There's six on this side, and then there's six down the top. Stuff works very well, but one thing I do not like about it is it's very heavy. My first winter I learned using this that as it snowed, the snow would collect on it because it was so wide. And after a period of time, it was drooping down so low the cows could just step over it. So I put this away and started using poly wire and have really tried to avoid this ever since. Okay, this is our poly wire. See how it's all frayed right here at the end? Here's actually one of the stainless steel wires it's braided in. And I'm not sure exactly how many is in there, but if I had to take a guess, I can see one, two, three, four, five. There's at least six, and there could be more. And then it's all twisted together to make this. This is very lightweight. I noticed when I switched the poly wire that year when it was snowing, since it's not very wide, there's not much for area for the snow to stick to. I didn't have the problems with this sagging from the weight of the snow. So I've been using this ever since. Now, as you can see, as I run each paddock and take it down, I always have cut the wire. And then when it's time to take it down, I just splice it back together. This has worked fine for me. Um, the way I tie it has kept the energy, the juice from dropping. So it hasn't been a big problem. But uh, they do actually make kits to, to uh, put two pieces of poly wire together. But if you tie it right, you don't need the kit. The, the really main thing you want to try and achieve is to tie it together several times. The more them wires overlap, the better chance you've got for the juice to carry through. If you just tie one knot, they might only be touching in one or two places. So I always do three knots, one in the middle and then one on each side. So there's plenty of overlapping joints to carry the juice from one side right through. And then here is one of the places, I, like I suggested, where you drill and then maybe do some cutouts where you can just pull the poly wire in and it holds it. It won't come unreeled. And uh, this has worked great. So something to think about. Um, that's one thing with intensive grazing you're going to want to consider is how long is it going to take you every day. Um, having an ATV set up to do your intensive grazing, it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, something to think about if you're thinking about doing intensive grazing if you don't have an ATV and you don't need anything extravagant. This is just a little two-wheel drive uh, 220 Kawasaki. Um, done everything I've need and even 
surprised me on a lot of occasions over the last couple winters with polar vortex and everything. So you don't need a real big ATV to make this work. So check on Craigslist maybe and uh, see what you can find on there. To do this properly, I needed something simple that would move easily and uh, not be a big pain to move. So what we've got here is my is my uh, watering sled that I use for the cattle. And on it, you can see a 50 gallon trough with a float and roughly a hundred and some foot of hose hooked up to the water spigot. Now, since we do practice intensive grazing here on the farm, we have roughly 28 spigots scattered out around 175 acres. So this, there's a spigot or more in every pasture. Some of them have three. So what I'm able to do is shut the spigot off, disconnect the hose, and then I drag the hose right behind this sled right to the next paddock or pasture. Um, this sled is basically made up of, uh, I think it's two or maybe, it might be three inch, um, steel well casing. And uh, it's pretty simple how it works. And after I uh, put some thought into this and started to learn a little bit about flies and the water, I decided to go ahead and throw on the, the fly sock. When you do intensive grazing, it's kind of hard to have something that's portable for the fly sock. So having this sled, I'm able to move the fly sock and the water all at the same time. Now, if my ATV was a little bit bigger, I would also go ahead and mount on the back the mineral feeder. But my little ATV is only two wheel drive and uh, I don't want to yank its guts out. So I pull the mineral feeder separate. Okay, so this is my mineral feeder setup. Um, the feeder itself is bought from the manufacturer fly killer cover um, and it mounts to pretty much anything but we mounted ours to a semi tire now it's not able to be seen in this picture but on the far side there is an eye hook mounted to the tire with a rope so I'm able to drag this from pasture to pasture very easily on the bottom of the cover is a wool like material where you put your fly agent and the canister on top and it wicks down through the lid and coach the cattle's face as they're getting minerals. To learn more about this I'll attach a video at the end. But this is a very nice feeder and portability is just excellent on it. Um, I have no trouble dragging this to the next pasture. So as you can see it does take quite a few things to get started with the intensive slash mob grazing. But once you acquire all the stuff you need I'm sure you're going to be delighted to go every day and work your cattle. I know I sure look forward to it. And over the years, I've seen the land make a remarkable comeback. So thanks for watching JC's Organic Farming. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And hey, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, feel free to ask them. I'd love to answer them. Thanks again.